George in history books that he's standing there with their father now. So the president of the United States. This is a test shot for the president to bring his daughters for that very reason. He will be, we understand, delivering a message about the next generation. So important. They are the benefactors of what these civil rights soldiers have done. Let me say something about this president's process as well. Uh, you know, listen, every politician has a speechwriter. But when it's a big moment like this, he closes the door. It's him by himself. And, 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 he, and he is going to be speaking from his heart. This is not going to be something scripted uh, based on polls. This is going to come from the soul of the President of the United States today. All right, Dan Jones, thanks so much. You're going to be with me throughout the day. Yes. This is going to be a riveting day. It is yes. just beginning to unfold. Hundreds of people turning out. We know thousands. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Also, you mentioned that 25-year-old man, now Congressman John Lewis. Legend, yeah. What is he thinking about now? Can you imagine to that bit? I mean, listen, when you're on the ground being beaten, you're not thinking about history. You're not thinking about 50 years. You're not thinking about a black president. You're thinking about, am I going to ever see my mother again? Right. And to come back 50 years later, a global icon, the eyes of the world upon him, and the president of the United States pointing to you and saying, but for you, I wouldn't be here. I cannot imagine what it would be like. I mean, what a country. What a story. I mean, you don't, if you can't get through the day without the tutu boxes, really you are the something And we are going to hear directly from John Lewis about that story, about that feeling, and the meaning of all this when we come right back. Athena Jones had a lovely conversation with the congressman right after this. The Today Show on Sirius XM. Center on Sirius XM. Of course, now it's all the news, celebrity guests, hot topics, and musical performances of NBC's Today Show, plus exclusive behind the scenes interviews. I'm Carson Daly. I'm Huda Kandi. I'm Abby Lee. We're going to live your weather across the nation. We're so excited. I love it. Hear the Today Show every day on Sirius XM and on the Today Show Radio, Channel 108. My pandemic is like CEO of Williams and Williams. Have you ever caught yourself saying, I'm waiting for the right time to sell my real estate? When the kids get out of school, the weather clears up, the attics clean down, the trees are trimmed, the puppy's house broken, the moon is full. Maybe you're not waiting, but you're wasting time, avoiding the changes that might make your life better. Stop waiting. Call Williams and Williams Real Estate Auction and move on with your life. Call us at 1 800 986 6419. 1 800 986 6419. Hi, folks, Alan Thick here. For some time now, I've been offering tips about how to deal with the IRS if you've fallen behind on your taxes. Telling you to call Optima Tax Relief because they're the best trained, most trustworthy, blah, blah, and blah. But now the message is so familiar, you may not be listening. Oh, it's him again. Well, here's the important message. Call Optima Tax Relief. They can help you resolve your IRS issues. The government, you know, can garnish your wages. They can levy your bank account, even take your home or business. To be fair, the IRS also has a new program called the Fresh Start Initiative to help you with that debt. But we've given you clever slogans, don't mess with the IRS, they'd rather settle for less than bother you more. Now the clever thing for you to do is call Optima Tax Relief. Now for your free consultation. Call 800-613-8836. 800-613-8836. 800-613-8836. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. No matter your company size, dealing with HR stuff is the worst. It's confusing and a total time drain. In fact, the average company spends over $1,000 per employee per year on HR alone and may not even know it. So do the math. HR paperwork could be costing you a fortune. If you are in a company or if you're an HR pro, do yourself a favor and check out Zenefits.com. Forbes calls Zenefits a runaway success and that thousands of companies are using it to simplify their HR. Zenefits lets you manage everything through this user-friendly dashboard. It connects all your current HR services. You know, payroll, health insurance, benefits, onboarding new hires, e and paperless. Makes managing HR super easy. And employees love it because they can log in and update their own files so you don't have to. But the best part is, Zenefits is insanely affordable. Get started for free at Zenefits.com slash radio. That's spelled Z-E-N-E-F-I-T-S dot com slash radio. Zenefits.com slash radio. I love coming to Mathnasium. Kids from kindergarten to 12th grade attend Mathnasium, the math-only learning center. Why? I feel much more confident in math. 
I want to be best in class. My parents are trying to ask me, like, oh, how do you get A in this test? And I tell them, I don't know anything. Set your child up for success this year at one of more than 500 franchise locations. Visit Mathnasium.com or call 844-234-1600 for a free parent pack. That's 844-234-1600. President Obama has been delayed in leaving for Selma, Alabama for the 50th anniversary of the Selma marches. Our own Aaron McPike has the very latest. Aaron, what do we know about this? Well, Suzanne, there was a security concern about a vehicle that was on the 1600 block of Constitution Avenue. And as you know, that is about four or five blocks south of the White House. So because of that, the White House wasn't on lockdown, but they did have some security concerns. They kept the press inside the briefing room so they couldn't go out onto the south lawn for the departure of Marine One. And the first family could then not take Marine One. Instead, they are motorcading in order to fly to Selma. Basically, this is going to delay the first family by about a half hour. So whether or not President Obama can speak at 2.30, that remains to be seen. It could be that he speaks a little bit later. But these things do happen with some frequency. They just have to change plans a little bit when they happen, Suzanne. All right. So, so no major concerns, Aaron? Not really. Again, a secret, a secret Service dog picked up a hit on this suspicious vehicle. It was four or five blocks away from the White House, but you know, it, it, there wasn't a, a concern directly at the White House, and so the first family is now again on the way to Selma. All right, Aaron, bye. Good to hear everything's going well. Appreciate that. And of course, I want to take it back to our own Frederica Whitfield, the coverage of the 50th anniversary of the Selma March. Um, Fred, just an extraordinary group of people who gathered there today, and uh, really just an incredible occasion, very emotional. It really is. It's emotional. Um, I talked to so many people who also say it is like a renewal for them. They come here every year, but this year will be different. And they don't mind. They won't mind that the president's going to be late as long as he's here because uh, they certainly feel that there are special meetings to his presence here in downtown Selma. So one of the most courageous men in the civil rights movement, that is what so many have recognized him as, is U.S. Congressman John Lewis. And our Athena Jones had the privilege of sitting down and reflecting with him to find out exactly what is he thinking on a day like this, 50 years after being so badly beaten on this bridge behind us. That's right, Fred. I had a chance to sit down with him. I had a chance to walk over this bridge, this Edmund Pettus Bridge with Congressman John Lewis. He talked to me about the violence and the brutality that he not only witnessed, but that he himself suffered on that day 50 years ago today. And he also talked to me about the legacy of that historic march. The bridge of Selma is almost a holy place. It is a place where people gave a little blood to redeem the soul of America. In this city, people couldn't register to vote simply because of the color of their skin. So we had to change that. John Lewis was just 25 years old. I can never forget what it felt like to be on this bridge on Bloody Sunday. We came to the highest point. Down below, we saw a sea of blue. Alabama State Troopers. And behind the State Troopers, we saw men on horseback. So, can we got within hearing distance of the State Troopers. And the Major said, Troopers advance. I thought over and over again, they're going to arrest us. They came to us. They knew us with night sticks. Traveling us with horses. I went down on my knees, my legs were not from under me. I thought I was going to die. He was carried back to the church where the march had begun. It was there he issued a challenge to President Lyndon Johnson. I stood up and said, I don't understand it. How President Johnson can send troops to Vietnam, but can I send troops to South Alabama to protect people who only desires to register the world? After Bloody Sunday, President Johnson spoke before Congress. It is wrong. Deadly wrong to deny any of your fellow Americans the right to vote in this country. It's not just Negroes, but really it's all of us who must overcome the crippling legacy of bigotry and injustice. 
and we shall overcome. He was the first American president to use the team so that he's a If you look at Dr. King, he has gained on his face. I still cry. I didn't like for anybody to see me to cry, but I cried. President Johnson federalized the Alabama National Guard, called out part of the United States military to protect us all the way from Selma to Montgomery. On August 6th, President Johnson signed the Landmark Voting Rights Act, ensuring that all citizens could vote regardless of their color. The Supreme Court struck down a key provision of that law in 2013, and efforts to fix it have stalled in Congress. If we fail to fix it, many of our fellow citizens will not be able to become participants in the democratic process. It's also why he returns to this bridge every year. The vote is, is powerful. It is the most powerful non-violent tool we have in a democratic society. I don't want people to forget that people pay the price. So it really was a moving conversation I was able to have with the congressman and a moving retelling of the story. And of course, we'll hear from him again later later today when he introduces the president. Of course, we look forward to that. And then you asked him what I think everybody wants to know. Were you ever angry? And what did you say? That's right. You look at this video and you think, I would be angry. W weren't you angry? I asked him that. And he said, I wasn't angry. I had a sense of righteous indignation. That's what he said. Wow. All right. Athena Jones, thank you so much for bringing that sit-down conversation. Uh, with John Lewis. Thanks, Ben. Of course, there were lesser-known civil rights activists who also were a part of history. Coming up, I'm going to introduce you to them, including the smallest freedom fighter. We said, now what do you little girls want? And we said freedom in our own little childish voice. Did you know what that meant? Not at the time, but it didn't take long. Just because you're a young person, don't think you can't make a difference, okay? Series XM presents a special Comedy Central radio event, Night of Too Many Stars. Join your host, John Stewart. That's why we're here tonight. That's why we're doing this. Right? Along with some of the biggest comedians in the world. Steve Carell. Amy Schumer. Paul Rudd. Louis C.K. Seriously, this is a real thing. John Oliver. Maya Rudolph. Mary David. And many more. Night of Too Many Stars. A benefit show for autism programs. Tomorrow at 8 p.m. East, 5 West. On Comedy Central Radio. Series XM 95. This is an important announcement for all people who want to take a risk-free challenge to whiten their teeth in five minutes. By calling now, you can whiten your teeth in five minutes using clinically proven power swabs. This risk-free challenge is for people whose smile has been yellowed by coffee, tea, red wine, or smoking. The power swabs five-minute challenge is available by responding to this advertisement. If lines are busy, try again. Because the power swabs five-minute challenge is exclusive, it's not available in drugstores. Power swabs was for Related by Dr. Martin Ginniger and whitens teeth with a patented tooth detergent and whitening agent. It's so effective, we challenge you to try it for five minutes to see how white your smile could be. Get it risk free. Dial 1 800 290 2616. That's 1 800 290 2616. Transform your smile into a wow, you look great smile. Dial 1 800 290 2616. That's 1 800 290 2616. If you're thinking about starting a business, now's the best time to do it. It's National Start Your Business Month at LegalZoom.com, and it's never been easier to start building your future. LegalZoom provides the support you need. For more than 10 years, they've helped a million business owners just like you. If you need advice for your business, no problem. LegalZoom's not a law firm, but they built a network of trusted attorneys to provide the guidance you need for your specific situation. Here's the best part. During National Start Your Business Month, LegalZoom is offering an attorney consultation for only $50. If you're unsure about the best way to start, or if you already run a business and need some advice, this offer is for you. Get legal advice for your business with no further obligation for a low one-time cost. Go to LegalZoom.com today to find out more. Attorney consultations are provided by independent attorneys available in most states. Get the legal help you need for your
referral business at LegalZoom.com and enter SiriusXM in the referral box to save even more. LegalZoom. Legal help is here. You train your body, work out, eat right. But what are you doing to train your brain? Challenge your brain with Lumosity.com. Designed by neuroscientists, Lumosity.com's online games give your brain a fun, stimulating workout. It only takes a few minutes each day to exercise your memory, attention, mental flexibility, and more. So start training today. Visit Lumosity.com. Challenge your brain with Lumosity.com. into a sea of people. There are so many folks who are turning out and the numbers continue to grow. We've already seen Martin Luther King Jr. arrive, the Reverend Jesse Jackson, who we have the honor of talking with in a matter of moments, as well as C.T. Vivian, as you recall, received the Presidential Medal of Freedom uh, last year. So here we are at the foot of the Edmund Pettus Bridge, and 1965, 300 marchers crossed that bridge. Among the most recognizable faces, you know, U.S. Congressman John Lewis, who will be taken to the stage later on today with the President of the United States, as well as the former President George W. Bush. But also, on that bridge, on Bloody, Bloody Sunday, was an eight-year-old who has come to be known as the smallest freedom fighter. She, along with others, sat down with me and shared their memories. Three witnesses to one powerful, cataclysmic moment in American civil rights history. What happens when you walk into this church? Cheyenne Webb. This is where it all began with me as that little girl. Who at age eight, who sat in the front row, always sat on the front row. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. himself named the smallest freedom fighter invited to attend voting rights march planning meetings at Brown Chapel. And we said, now what do you little girls want? And we said, freedom in our own little childish voice. Did you know what that meant? Not at the time, but it didn't take long for me to know what that meant. See, back at that time, you had the colored white water fountains. Sam Walker was just 11 years old, living in a very segregated Selma. I don't ever, ever need to be depressed or ever need to text. I just look at one of these walls. Because, see, these walls represent a victory. You know, it represent a victory for the people. Today, he nearly single-handedly protects both troubling and inspirational mementos that provide vivid detail about Bloody Sunday, like the sheriff's nightstick, worn shoes from marchers, and photographs, all at the Selma Voting Rights Museum. Walker, just because you're a young person, don't think you can't make a difference, okay? Teaching the next generation how good they have it. One of the things they used to do with the people, they used to make you take a test before you could register that was called the literacy test. They had trick places on the test that no one could get the right answer to. Guess how many dead reasons is y'all? For health reasons and a little bit of Parkinson's, you weren't sure if you were going to make this trip. But now that you're here... I'm very glad I came. And Reverend Orloff Miller, who will never forget this street corner and witnessing the savagery of hate leading a mob of white segregationists to beat and kill his colleague, Reverend Jim Reed, for what they said was his betrayal of the white race. You are standing about where the attack took place. They came from behind us. And we heard them come in because they said, hey, you. And we agreed just keep walking. And one of them had a club, slammed it against James Reed's head here. I dropped to the ground because we've been trained to do that, went into a fetal position to, to protect myself. Even so, I got kicked in the head. Yeah, Locke had his glasses broken and pummeled a bit. And, but neither of us were seriously hurt. It was Jim who got the whole bit. And, all was over in about 30 seconds. Each of them recalling March 7, 1965. Their experiences independently unique, yet the anguish similarly felt. The songs, the melodies of hope, those spiritual songs, and then the, the freedom songs that were being sung. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. We shall not be moved. 
that was clear. If that would strike a chord with any child, and being just in the midst of listening to Dr. King's speeches, the words in which he uttered to the courageous people that were here to join in that struggle. This was 50 years ago, you're 58 now. You remember this like it was yesterday. Well, this was not a movie, neither a documentary. But I witness and experience every day during that time as that disobedient eight-year-old, it was live and in living color. People were challenged with all types of hatred, racism, inequality, injustice, violence, tears, and even death of people that I had the opportunity to miss that job. And then to see them die for something that they really believed in. It was devastating. And how, how did you keep going? How did you maintain that hope and that faith that this was worth it, that you were going to get there you with could, this group of you people you just be, met. You couldn't be a part of such a movement at such a time and not have that fight in you. Never give up. Never think it's hopeless because there can be victory at the end if you just keep fighting. Where do we go from here? On this 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday, at the Edmund Pettus Bridge, many of the hundreds who lived through this journey of securing voting rights for everyone, willing to look back, retrace footsteps to help better secure this never happens again. And protecting voter rights continues to be a great concern, especially after the 2013 U.S. Supreme Court decision allowing states a certain discretion before changing any voting rules. Among those very concerned about that, the Reverend Andrew Young, who I'll be talking to the next hour, you'll hear from him. And also very concerned about that very issue, the Reverend Jesse Jackson, who is with me now. You just arrived moments ago, and you see the crowd swelling here, and you reminded me, and you're letting people know that this really is not a celebration. We've got this great music going on, but in your view, it's a this is a signal that there is still a lot of work to be done. Call for protests. As a matter of fact, what was significant about the 1965 Little Rights Act was the protection uh, against pre-clearing schemes and voter ID schemes uh, and stacking back in district. When the Supreme Court removed Section 4, they removed the protection, like removing the troops in the last century. The result is now you have more votes and less power across the marginalization. Second of the issue of poverty. Mrs. Boyne was invited about the gang 50 years ago. Her home has been condemned. Down the street, our houses without uh, running water and outdoor toilets. Forty five percent of settlers in poverty, living in trailers and the like. Uh, that must be this must be an LG, LBJ moment Then with legislation as well as the issue of a focus issue on poverty. Well, who do you blame or what is the cause, particularly for a Selma, historic city? People come here as tourists, they want to know more about the history of 1965, around it and beyond. But then they come here and they will see that after they've crossed the bridge, there's a lot of blight, there's a lot of dilapidation, unemployment is very low. Uh, the exactly, it's very high. Employment is very low, and you've got one in five children living in poverty here. We have a million people in Alabama in poverty, yet the governor rejects 10, 8 to 10 billion dollars in Medicaid money. A hundred million dollars sent here for education, still on prison development. So it's almost missing probation of funds. So the voter rights act of 65 was different in 1870 because it had the protection of the federal government, section 4 and 5. But the, but the Supreme Court removed section 4, which left us with the carbon out the key. And so now you see state legislatures moving toward a kind of confederate ideology in Virginia around the Texas. There is a need to, re to restore section for those politicians who come here, Congress people, must fight to restore section four. And some who are coming here who 